Shabbata, Shalom. Shabbata, Shalom. Greetings, everyone. We give glory to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, and our Dono Yache, Mishiaka, our Posaka, Posaka, which is our Passover. <laughs> oh, we are enjoying it, as you all have seen already that we've been enjoying it. <laughs> and uh, we are looking forward to this opportunity to go into some edification to understand the Passover, looking at what the law talked about and some of the history and just getting to understand the Passover. So let's start off with Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Pesach. And then we see, take you a lamb for your families and kill the Passover. The lamb was what was used as the Passover. The sacrifices were shadows of things to come that Yahweh had to come fulfill. And John chapter 1 verse 29, we see what John says regarding him. The next day, John, see if Yahweh coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, which taketh away the sin of the world. So there we see that Yahweh was that Lamb that came and is confirmed in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Mashiach or Pesach is sacrificed for us. So we see scripture that we can understand that the Passover is talking about Yahweh. He was the true sacrifice. When he came and did away with the animal sacrifice, when he rent the temple in two through his blood sacrifice, there were no more animal sacrifices to make. Let's continue reading to see how that Yache came, and it was him that came down from heaven and delivered us in the time of Exodus, and which gives us understanding to know he's going to come down and deliver us again. Because the end shall be just like the Exodus. Right. Let's look at Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, then verse 7 and 8. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of Ahiah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. That angel was Yahweh. And you know it's Yahweh because when Moses went to him, he said, Remove thy shoes off thy foot, for in where thou standest is holy ground. Right. He was in the presence of the Son of Allah. Right. All right? Let's see what Yahweh said to him. Uh, verse 7. And Ahiah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flown with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. All right. Let's continue to see that it was Yahweh that came down to do the Father's will. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter... 18 verse 10 to 18, please. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verse 10. But on the other side there sounded an ill, a courting cry of the enemies, and a lamentable noise was carried abroad for children that were bewailed. The master and the servant were punished after one manner, and like as the king, so suffered the common person. This is talking about how they killed all the firstborn. Okay. So they all together had innumerable dead with one kind of death. Neither were the living sufficient to bury them. For in one moment the noblest offspring of them was destroyed. For whereas they would not believe anything by reason of the enchantments, upon the destruction of the firstborn they acknowledged this people to be the sons of Elohim. For while all things were in quiet silence, and that night was in the midst of her swift course. All right. Thine almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of destruction. He said, Thine almighty word leaped down from heaven. Yahweh came down and did the will of his father. 
to save his people. And brought that unfeigned commandment at the sharp sword, and standing up filled all things with death. And it touched the heaven, but it stood upon the earth. Then suddenly visions of horrible dreams troubled them sore, and tears came upon them unlooked for. And one thrown here, and another there, half dead, showed the cause of his death. So we've seen that it was him that did it. So let's continue and look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. Exodus chapter 12, verse 26. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? All right. So in this chapter, they had went over everything that had to be done for Passover. And this is something we're supposed to be teaching our children continually. This will cause us never to forget what happened in Egypt. And more importantly, never to forget Yahweh. And so that when he would come, we would know him because he was showing us who he was through all his deeds before. Right? That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of Ahayas Pesaka, who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered, their, and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. It was a shadow of things to come. Hebrews 10 and 1, to see that that actual land that was sacrificed back then was just a shadow of things to come, and it could not truly make us perfect. Hebrews 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of, of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Seeing as though those sacrifices couldn't actually make us perfect and understanding that they were a shadow of better things to come, we can understand what Colossians 2 verse 16 and 17 was talking about better now. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Shabbat days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Mashiach. So we see why we're not sacrificing animals here on Passover now. Because those animal sacrifices are a shadow of things to come. And we're going to be doing animal sacrifices again in the kingdom. But the bodies of Mishiaka, we partake in the blood Lord of Yache for our Passover now. And that's the atonement that we partake in. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, to see that sadly the Israelites did not understand this. Even when reading the law of Moses, we continued trusting in the carnal sacrifices, not seeing that Yache was the goal of it. And it was a stumbling block to us. And still is to this day, sadly. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse fourteen. For their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. We veil it done away in Messiah. But even unto this day, when Mushi is read, the veil is upon their heart. Sad that's what's hindering us to this day. But in truth, if we would turn unto the goal of the Passover and see that it was about Yahshua that we needed to attain unto him and his body and his blood, we would truly be partaking in the feast. Hence, we have to eat his body and his blood today. We look at John 6, verse 53 to 56, please. John 6, verse 53. Then Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. It's quite amazing he was professing these things before he had did the sacrifice. And this has given us understanding that that communion is the sacrifice of Yache. That's the sacrifice of the church, the animal sacrifice to cleanse the church and present it wholly unto Ahaya Alahim. Right? Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Go to First Corinthians chapter 11 so we can see that it was understood. Yacha gave his apostles the understanding that communion 
was and is the sacrifice of the church, the spiritual sacrifices and partaking in the hope of Allah. Right? Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 11. For I have received of Adonia that which also I deliver unto you, that Adonayache, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and he had supped. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show Adonai's death till he come. And remember he said, Yache, our Passover is sacrificed for us. As we were exhorted, Paul said, Let no man judge you in meat or drinks in respect of a holy day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Mashiach. Can you continue and finish, please? Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of Adonia unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Adonia. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning Adonia's body. And when he said examine yourself, you have to make sure you're in the faith and we have to assess do we have all toward our neighbor. Because Yache said, if you come to bring your gift and remember your neighbor have ought against thee, right. leave your gift and go reconcile with your neighbor, then come off your gift. So you have to right. reconcile whatever situations or whatever disagreements there might be with a person so that you may be able to offer your offering in righteousness. For this cause, many were weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So there we have an exhortation to understand why we have issues where people are having issues with health and whatnot is from our sins because if we do good no harm shall come upon us right, right? so with that um, we're gonna I think that essentially we understand that Yacha is the Passover right. and that we're not doing animal sacrifice anymore so we'll pause there and in another segment we'll go into some more things in understanding the new temple to come. So we're going to pause there and convene at another time. What do you think? That's good. I hope you'll be magnified. Hope you all enjoying the feast. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Shalom. Shalom.